In the offices of Dunder Mifflin, Scranton Branch, salesmen, accountants, and even HR got together to decide once and for all, is Hillary Swank hot or not? And I don't even get the discussion. Hot is a temperature, people. Of course, they're referring to her looks, not her inner beauty. But one could easily ask that same question about her career. Is Hillary Swank hot or not? She has had quite an interesting career, and it got us asking what point in her career was she quote-unquote hot? In 2008, when that episode of The Office aired, yeah, her career was on fire, like the core of the center of the Earth. But what about in between the years that she won those Oscars? Well, not exactly. And what about now? I'm not exactly sure. That's why I'm asking this question. This this question that's that, that I'm about to ask right here. The question is, what the f happened to Hillary Swank? I kept expecting a second plot twist where we found out that Hillary Swank actually was a boy. But to truly understand what the f happened to Hillary Swank, we must begin at the beginning, and the beginning began when she was born on her birthday, 1974. Nebraska. As a youth, Hillary Swank would bounce around a bit, going from Nebraska to Washington to California, developing a love for gymnastics. She was actually a junior Olympian state finalist. After moving to California with her mother as a teen, she lived in a car at first and described herself as an outsider, eventually dropping out of high school. In 1991 and 1992, Hillary Swank landed two episodes of Growing Pains before getting her first feature, a supporting turn in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the, the movie. That same year, she took a steady role on the ABC sitcom Camp Wilder, becoming the best friend of the main character. Two years later, Hilary Swank would play Mr. Miyagi's next protege in The Next Karate Kid. It's the one with a girl, and she's that girl, replacing Daniel LaRusso. I think a lot of people are kind of too hard on this one, but it is terrible, especially compared to its predecessors. But despite that terrible reputation, it was a breakout role for Hilary Swank. The movie wasn't that great, but we could tell that this young lady had some talent. But it would still be some time before she really made it. Also, in 1994, she starred as an abused stepdaughter, finally some dramatic meat for this budding actress, in a made-for-TV movie called Cries Unheard. 1996 brought two direct-to-video flicks, the horror sequel, Sometimes They Come Back Again, and the actioneer Counterfeit, back when it was cool to replace a C with a K. See how they spell it? Counterfeit, with it with a K, because that's cool, spelled with a K. There was also a turn as a rebellious teen in the TV movie Terror in the Family. Then she would star alongside her future ex-husband, Chad Lowe, in a 1997 movie called Quiet Days in Hollywood. And she would keep on doing the TV trend, exposing sororities and dying to belong, and leading the Unsolved Mysteries adaptation, The Sleepwalker Killing, while also getting a major role on ABC's short-lived Leaving L.A. But the highlight of Hilary Swank's early TV career was as a single mom on Beverly Hills 90210. Unfortunately, her 16 episode run was cut off, and at that point, Hilary Swank figured her career was over. I run, but I don't run away. She did a small indie film called Heartwood, and after a three-year casting process, Hilary Swank was cast in Boys Don't Cry in 1999. Hilary Swank would play a transgender character, and for this role, Swank proved to be more devoted to her craft than ever, even living as a man for a month and dropping to 7% body fat. For the role, Hillary Swank earned only $3,000, 
and an Academy Award for Best Actress. It is undoubtedly one of the most powerful, tragic performances of that decade. An Oscar well deserved. Swank would start off the 2000s with the film The Gift, earning a Saturn Award nomination as, again, the victim of abuse. She's really good at playing characters who have been through a lot of pain and suffering. It's a wonderful skill to have. In 2001, Hilary Swank starred in her first costume drama, a film called The Affair of the Necklace, giving a pretty gosh darn good turn as Jean de Valais Saint Wami. I think that's how you say it, who had a roundabout role in the French Revolution. That's the one in France. The next year saw the Christopher Nolan masterpiece, Insomnia. And yeah, Hilary Swank, uh, she's fine in this, but she easily falls to the wayside of Al Pacino in Robin Williams. But you know what? She does a damn fine job of supporting those powerhouse performances, so you gotta respect her for that, I, I think. Hilary Swank had mostly avoided that post-Oscar slump that many fall victim to, but she did see a bleak 2003, even though she gave an incredible turn that really showed her range in a film called 1114, which premiered at cons, but ultimately ended up on DTV, and nobody really saw it. And then she did a movie called The Core, which is just like a stupid, stupid mess of a movie, and it's just, uh, it's just, did I mention it's stupid? I get that it's science fiction and stuff, but it's just so unbelievable, it, it seems like a child thought of this idea. A CHILD! And I remember seeing the trailer of this and being like, why is Hilary Swank in this? I guess she needs money to do things, to buy things, to, uh, feed and shelter her herself and, and family, I guess. I don't know, I was really trying to get to the core of why Hilary Swank chose to be in the core. In 2004, she did something called Red Dust, which I've never heard of, but I have heard of the other movie she did that year. The Clint Eastwood-directed Best Picture winner masterpiece, Million Dollar Baby. Starring as Maggie Fitzgerald, an aspiring boxer who winds up as a quadriplegic facing euthanasia. It's a pretty heavy stuff. Not exactly fun, but sometimes movies aren't supposed to be fun. Sometimes they're supposed to make you think and make you sad and make you ponder the great questions in life, like what the f happened to Hilary Swank. But yeah, she's amazing in Million Dollar Baby. She once again showed her devotion by training relentlessly and putting on 20 plus pounds of pure muscle. And yes, she won her second Academy Award for Best Actress. One of just three people to win two statues by the time they were 30. And also that same year, Hilary Swank got sucked into uh, TV again to play Alice Paul in Iron Jawed Angels. 2006 saw her in a thankless role as an Elizabeth Short lookalike in Brian De Palma's The Black Dahlia, which should have been a good movie, but it just wasn't. And I don't know if The Black Dahlia had anything to do with this, but that same year she split up with husband Chad Lowe. It probably had nothing to do with that, but let's just let the mystery grow. But the following year was very prolific and saw Hilary Swank hitting every demographic she could. The supernatural horror film The Reaping, which is pretty okay and good, even though it's well below her talents. There was also the film Freedom Riders that had her as a real-life hero, and she was grossly miscast in P.S. I Love You, which just kind of showed that romantic territory was not her bag. There is something to say about Hilary Swank. She always stays true to her independent film roots, and every now and then does a independent film, like Birds of America. Then she did the epic biopic thing, starring as Amelia Earhart in Amelia, which is like kind of perfect casting. She does look a lot like Amelia Earhart, but even the trailer of this film just felt like desperate Oscar bait. 
even though this story and this woman are very interesting. There was a little bit of buzz around this performance, but Amelia is mostly looked at as a missed opportunity to truly bring this aviator story to life on the big screen. Maybe somebody will make a better Amelia Earhart movie later. Hilary Swank would then start off the 2010s with a SAG nomination for Conviction, playing a woman who becomes a lawyer to represent her helpless brother. Then there was a spooky little film called The Resident, and she decided to join the ensemble cast of New Year's Eve, because why not? Everybody else is in this frickin' movie. But then came a very controversial moment. That year, she celebrated the Chechnyan president's birthday. So really, truly for me, this is a, a great honor to learn more about you and your country and what you're building. And this birthday party attendance was controversial because this Chechnyan president person is generally known to be a fan of uh, human rights violations and stuff like that. But Hillary Swank would plead ignorance to this atrocious birthday party behavior. She tried to recover with a TV movie called Mary and Martha, and it worked! All the controversy was gone and she was forgiven, because I forgot about it. Until now. From there, Hilary Swank, as usual, showed the occasional glimpse of sheer force, with the Palme de Tour nominated western The Homesman in 2014 giving a fantastic performance against Tommy Lee Jones. And then she did some more Oscar bait, playing a pianist with ALS in the drama You're Not You. Then she took some time off to focus on her family and charity work, forming foundations that help dogs and at-risk teens and make eco-friendly clothing, you know, that kind of stuff. Good for you, Hilary Swank. She would return to the screen, sort of, in the film Spark, giving a rare voice performance in this animated bomb that lost $40 million at the box office. Lost $40 million. 2007 brought a really interesting, fun movie, Logan Lucky. She was a wonderful addition to this cast. She was also in a film called 55 Steps, which was more of a showcase for Helena Bonham Carter but Hilary Swank was there to support her. The following year saw what they had, and a return to TV with the series Trust. 2019 gave the underappreciated thriller I Am Mother, while in 2020 she kept really busy. She did the violent political satire, The Hunt, had a juicy role in the thriller Fatel, and there was the Netflix series Away. This was kind of unremarkable, but it did allow Hilary Swank to explore surprisingly familiar territory. But like many of her shows, was done after one season. Then she decided to become a journalist in ABC's Alaska Daily, but that was over after one season as well. And that's where we leave off on Hilary Swank at this point. And I'm sure she's got something amazing in the works just around the corner. Because this gal, she's still working, she's still crushing, and her legacy of winning two Oscars has secured her an honorable spot in the history of cinema. So nobody should give a f about what the f happened to Hilary Swank. Because yeah, she's doing just fine. But I'm just saying she could be doing really well. I mean, this million dollar baby could be back on top again if she just does one thing. What is that one thing you ask? Hillary Swank needs to join Cobra Kai. WTF.